You know, it seems like Paige and Alberto El Patron are made for each other. Just two knuckleheads, two idiots that can't get out of their own ways, get caught up in their own bullshit. That's what it seems like to me. Uh, so I'm not surprised that we had yet another incident happen this time at an airport. I think it was in Orlando, but correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I'm not surprised. It's not been the first time, and frankly, it's probably not going to be the last time. There's something there. There's something wrong with one or both of them. Probably both of them. Just, it's again, an observation from the outside looking in. But of course, with the incident that's happened at the airport, I'm not surprised to find out that everything about this has been very slanted in terms of its presentation, and everything has been very one-sided, and it's been very, very anti-Alberto El Patron and very pro-Page. It's disappointing, it's frustrating, but it most certainly is not surprising. And I just have one question for all of you. I think it's an important question. What if Alberto El Patron is innocent? Because the last time I checked in this country, we operate under a justice system where it is supposed to be, allegedly supposed to be, innocent until proven guilty. And with the evidence that we've heard, seen, read, and the fact that we've really gotten nothing from Alberto's version of events, there's been no court case, there's been no anything, how can we sit there and jump to any type of conclusion, frankly, one way or another, whether he's innocent or he's guilty? And again, based off a presumption of innocence until guilt is proven, if anything, wouldn't you skew at this particular moment until you get proof beyond a reasonable doubt that he's innocent? And I'm sorry, I don't care what type of uh, societal bullshit you buy into. I don't care what type of narrative you're trying to drive. I don't care how much you like Paige or how much you don't like Alberto Del Rio. The fact is... You have gotten nowhere near enough evidence at this point that it would hold up in a court of law that says that Alberto El Patron is guilty. Period. Does the audio tape really tell the story of him being the abuser? I don't see how anybody can listen to that and come away thinking that. They might have an opinion of what they might think, but you can't sit there and suggest that that's real evidence that indicates that Alberto abused her or, frankly, that she abused him. If anything, based off of some of the verbiage of what was said, it would indicate to you that she might have done something to him since he's the one talking about calling the cops and pressing charges. But again, that could be slanted. That could be misleading. But it doesn't conclusively state. So why do I see so many people going on social media and on the different wrestling websites talking about how bad this looks for Alberto El Patron and how guilty he looks and how clearly it has to be him that's at fault? I think that's just ridiculous. And then talking about the eyewitness, one eyewitness who I believe is still unnamed, um, does that necessarily mean that that person's version of events is actually what happened? Never mind that there's all this evidence over the years that eyewitness testimony could be very flawed and potentially flat out wrong. Furthermore, do we know just how much that eyewitness actually saw and heard? Or did they embellish? Did they add things? Or did they not get the full proper context of the entire scenario of what happened? I mean, when you're talking about, well, he smelled like booze, well... I think everybody agrees based off of what we've heard, read, and everything else. There's no disagreement that he had something thrown on him. If somebody dumps a bottle or a glass of booze on you, aren't you going to smell like booze whether you drank any of it or not? Especially if it got into your face and it got in your mouth and it got all over your shirt. I mean, let's just use a little bit of common sense here. And I think it's important to point this out. Just because you like Paige doesn't mean she's innocent, especially when you look at the way she's kind of conducted and carried herself as an adult professional. Uh, there are things that make you think that she's not as sweet as innocent as you might like to pretend her to be, and we all know that to be true. And supporting her and believing that she's 100% innocent and not culpable or responsible in any way doesn't mean that she's going to fuck you, does not mean that she's going to do a sex tape with you. So cut this shit out. And just because you don't like Alberto, and there would appear to be reasons not to like Alberto, the way he conducts himself, kind of carries himself, he comes across, that doesn't make him guilty either. It doesn't mean just because he's a man and because he's a, a famous performer that he's innocent either, but it doesn't make him guilty. And it kind of fits into a whole pattern in our society of really, when it comes to these type of issues, abuse and domestic violence, where it's always focused around the guy and what the guy had to do. It's man-blaming, it's man-shaming, and it's fucking ridiculous. It never takes into account anything that the women did. Perfect example of this 
if Ashley and I go out in public and she starts wailing on me and wailing on me and wailing on me, and I haven't touched her, but she keeps wailing on me, nobody's jumping in to stop that shit. Nobody's going to sit there and tell her anything bad about it. People are going to pull out their fucking phones and I'm going to be world star hip hop famous known as the honky that got his ass whooped. And everybody's going to laugh and chuckle about it. But if all of a sudden I was the one that was beating her and hitting her a hundred times, then I'm evil. Everybody's going to jump in and I'll be lucky to survive. How is that okay? And don't give me that man versus woman bullshit. It's, it's a thing of equality of convenience. Equality when it is only convenient for the narrative or what you're specifically trying to get accomplished. Equality should be equality across the board. But even if you want to get into all this shit, let's get nuts here. So then if she's hitting me 50, 60, 70 times, and then I hit her once and knock her the fuck out, couldn't you argue that maybe it's self-defense, even though her punches didn't have much of a blow, but I just knocked her the fuck out. Now again, I'm the bad guy. It kind of reminds me of the Joe Mixon situation where it was actually on video where I'm sure he said something stupid. He approached her, but the woman pushed him and then smacked him in the face. But he's the bad guy. He's the only one that gets charged. He's the only one that there's any focus on because he fucking knocked her the fuck out. We can't just sit there and say because of the consequence of the action that it automatically makes what the second person did, the responder, worse. That's fucking ridiculous just because it's the man. If a woman is stabbing you 30, 40 times and you shoot her once in the head and kill her in response to being stabbed potentially to death and you survive and she dies, should you be tried on murder, murder charges or should that be classified as self-defense? It is a similar a situation here even with much graver consequences she's stabbing you repeatedly you're just supposed to sit there and fucking take it because she's a woman that's bullshit that is absolute bullshit and and i've seen some ridiculous things talked about on the internet over the past couple of days talking about how he's intentionally trying to sabotage her career how do you know that he's trying to do that and what really makes you think he is and furthermore what makes you think that Paige isn't doing a fine enough dandy fucking job of sabotaging her own damn career? People talking about his pattern of abuse is proven by the way he's trying to call out Triple H in the New Day and the Usos. He's out of control and he's trying to control her and this and that. Let me ask you this. Let's put aside the bullshit for a second. If your girl that you're with now, who very well probably didn't tell you they had done a sex tape, not only did a sex tape, but did several sex tapes and all that shit got leaked on the internet for the world to see and people know who you are so you can't just easily hide and people know who she is so she just can't easily hide and you're not about that life and then to rub salt in the wounds the employer you used to work for or the crew you used to hang with keeps bringing it up on national television for millions of people to hear and see and then it could be replayed on social media over and over again wouldn't you get a little pissed and potentially want to lash out? And especially when it comes to guys and talking about our women, no matter how shitty they treat us, we can get all types of rational about this shit. Couldn't this just mean that a dude is getting caught up in his feelings about his lady? Not saying it is, but wouldn't that be a rational explanation here? And people talking about his, his pattern of abusive behavior. How do we leap to this conclusion? Because his ex-wife said something about it in a divorce. Now, mind you, ADR said something about her in the divorce too and because again people going through a divorce male or female would never ever lie about something that their spouse did especially when it comes to dividing up money and assets give me a fucking break because he smacked a wwe employee who by the way allegedly said racist shit to him and had a history this was a trend and a pattern and nobody was doing anything about it and it's not like alberto could sit there and just go to anybody in the wwe and they were going to give a fuck about it they encourage that type of behavior they probably promoted the damn dude then you've got fucking page's brother popping off on social media talking about how um page was abused by brad maddox physically and i believe mentally uh, at 18 years of age Number one, the math doesn't add up, you stupid fuck. Because she didn't even get to FCW until 2011 when she was already 19 years of age. 
on top of that, based off of what everybody's been able to kind of surmise in terms of when those tapes were being done, it was somewhere between 2013 to 2014, which would have meant at that time Paige was 21 to 22 years of age. This sounds more like a brother acting like a dad, sitting there pretending like their sister, their daughter is sweet and innocent and would never do anything like that. And it clearly had to be the guy that abused him. It clearly had to be the guy that put up with him because we would never expect our daughters, our sisters to take any responsibility for their fucking actions. It couldn't possibly have anything to do with them or the fact that they were a mature adult and they made a mature adult decision of what they wanted to do with themselves their bodies and their lives give me a fucking break and again randomly thrown out there talking about physical and mental abuse where's your fucking evidence and you had no problem talking about it why wouldn't you produce the evidence if you fucking had it why wouldn't you put it on social media why wouldn't you put it on the internet why wouldn't you provide it to the police could it be the fact that you're making this shit up not saying he is but doesn't that strike you as a little suspicious and then talking about Alberto doing the same thing, we've got pictures for the past six months and all this bullshit. Could it be anything to fact, and we know the reports going back from before, that the family wasn't very happy that she was married to a man that was over 15 years older than her. Could it be anything to the fact that they may be mad about the fact that Paige married somebody that was 40 and or Mexican? Could be one, could be both, could be mostly the age thing, probably mostly the age thing. That would have absolutely nothing to do with it. And again, if you have evidence going back six months of physical abuse that your sister's receiving at the hands of her guy, of her husband, or whatever the hell he is, why wouldn't you have already turned that over to the police six fucking months ago? Or at least, if anything else, in today's world, why in the hell wouldn't you put that out there on the internet and social media for everybody to see? I'm just not buying it. It doesn't mean, again, that it doesn't exist. Just looking at it kind of from a, what's the end play here, a logic standpoint, it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. And what does that speak about to the family and to specifically the brother if they've had evidence of their daughter, uh, their sister being abused and they didn't do shit about it? What does that say about them? Why aren't people asking that important question? I've heard some lame ass excuses talking about he's got her trapped, he's got power over her. What the fuck are you talking about? She can't leave? Bullshit. She's making six figs working for WWE. She has the financial resources to fucking go at her own. Did anybody ever think that maybe she doesn't want to go at her own? Maybe she's happy in her situation. Maybe she's just fucking batshit crazy. Did we ever have that enter into the potential of possibility of what this could be about? And talking about power over her, you know, at some point in time, when does she have to start taking responsibility for her choices, her decisions, and her actions in life? And it frustrates me so much, I hear it all the time, when I hear a woman talking about how this baby daddy isn't shit, or this ex-husband isn't shit, bitch, you have four kids by four different dudes. At some point in time, when do you stop blaming everybody else, when do you start looking at the mirror, and you sit there and say, okay, am I doing something wrong? Am I driving these men away? Am I intentionally keeping them away? Or am I attracting myself intentionally to the same type of fucking busters to meet the true definition of insanity, which is to do the same thing over and over again to expect the results to be any fucking different? At some point in time, when do we transition from always blaming somebody else to doing the most difficult thing, but the most important thing, blaming ourselves first? He, she can't leave. Give me a fucking break. He's got power over her. He's messed with her. Did anybody ever have this enter into the thought of possibility that this bitch might be bats anyways? That there might be a problem there that is independent of anything any man is going to do to her? Or potentially because of her mental state, potentially, that it's not them that's creating the issue, it's her. And she's her own worst enemy. But again, how dare I say that right? And the whole thing talking about ADR, excuse me, Alberto El Patron now, saying that he hoped her uncle hurried up and died. You know, if it was said, I don't believe that was on the audio recording, but if it was said, that's something terrible. But a woman has never ever said anything terrible and not meant it. And guys in general, we haven't said anything terrible that we didn't mean. I know I've said shit before that I didn't mean, but I said it. I know Ashley said horrible shit. Well, she probably meant it, the bitch. But... She probably didn't, but she still said it. And sometimes you get caught up in the heat of the moment. The governor goes off and there is no filter. You're just letting the shit flow. And this whole thing talking about, well, he's got her hopped up on cocaine and shit, or he's sitting there 
fucking high out of his gourd on freaking cocaine. The fact that he was detained by the police, if he would have had that much cocaine in his system and or in his bags, don't you think he would be in jail right now? And if there was really that much evidence of abuse, don't you think the cops wouldn't have let him leave the airport and ultimately wouldn't have would have arrested him? Like I'm hearing all this crap now talking about GFW's got to do something, not talking about investigating and actually just trying to find out what really happened, but talking about stripping him of the title and suspending him, potentially firing him. Whoa, 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 whoa. What if Alberto was innocent? You're trying to sabotage a man's career when you really don't fucking know what happened. You're going off of an audio tape that really doesn't tell you that much. I witnessed testimony from one person where you don't even really know how credible that eyewitness is and how credible that testimony is. At this moment, as far as I know, there is no video evidence, which again is kind of surprising to me if it happened in an airport, why there not be some type of video or surveillance that would either corroborate the witnesses or kind of exonerate Alberto El Patron. How do we leap to all of these fucking conclusions? It's crazy. But again, people talking this dumb shit about this indicates a clear pattern of abuse. Maybe it does. But there also could be a logical, rational explanation, yeah, for potentially two logic, illogical, irrational people. Aren't you going to be a little bit pissed off if your girl did a sex tape and probably didn't tell you about it and presented herself one way, but then she's something different, and then you find out on national TV that people are talking shit about it, so you got to keep reliving that and knowing that you're famous and knowing that people recognize who you are, you just can't easily run away and hide from it, and maybe you potentially didn't sign up for that shit? Yeah, Alberto shouldn't be talking shit. He shouldn't be doing this shit. He should be focusing on what he's doing with his character and with the company that employs him, Global Force Wrestling, and try to get himself and his company, his product, his brand over and not worry about the fucks in Stamford, Connecticut. But that's easier said than done, especially when we get into the feels of the heart and the feels of the penis. I just resent this whole notion that because it's Alberto, and because so many of you have this sick fascination with Paige that you really like her, so she's automatically got to be innocent. Because deep down you think that supporting her might eventually lead to you someday getting laid by her is completely fucking ridiculous. And that seems to be a lot of what it comes down to. Or you're getting so caught up in the society that we live in today where we blame men for everything. And we hold women accountable for nothing because we are afraid of being called sexist. We are afraid of being called discriminatory. We are afraid for being singled out for saying this shit. No, because frankly, a lot of women know this shit too. Women know they're fucking crazy. They acknowledge it. They own it. They accept it. You'll hear about it all the time. If you talk to women, they'll, they'll acknowledge the fact that they're wrong, but they're still going to pretend like they're right. This is like basic male, female marriage shit. This isn't anything new. And the whole thing about 80% of domestic abuse or whatever the hell it is, is done by men. It's just complete and total horse shit. Complete horse shit. That might be 80% of reported cases, but how many guys actually report the abuse that they go through? Physical, mental, emotional, all of that stuff. I guess it only counts when it's the woman that's the victim, though. I just think it's disappointing in all of this that everybody has been so quick to jump to conclusions. And I don't want you to think coming out of this video that I'm jumping to a conclusion because Alberto could be guilty as hell. He could be. And there's a possibility. There's a 50% possibility he's guilty as shit. And if he is, shame on him. And let's get him the hell out of the wrestling business. But then there's also a 50% possibility that either Paige is the offender here and consistently the offender or Alberto is innocent. But we don't consider that 50%. We want to focus on this 50% because it's a more popular opinion to have. It doesn't go counterculture. It doesn't go against the grain. It's not controversial. It's just the easier way to go. Because in part our society, our media over the years has programmed us in such a way that it makes us think that this is the only potential possibility that there is. But it's not. Like I said again, at this moment, I don't know if he's guilty or not. And frankly, neither do fucking you. So until we get more evidence, and believe me, to be able to determine one way or another and have a true accurate judgment, we need more evidence, hopefully some video evidence, additional eyewitnesses, a lot of different things. Until we get to that point, 
we maybe should stop assuming that a guy is guilty. Because the fact is, I don't know if he is or isn't, and you most certainly as well don't know if he is or isn't. And we're forgetting that one key important question when talking about innocent until proven guilty. What if Alberto El Patron is innocent? Then what do you have to say for yourselves?